Have you ever wanted to climb inside your kid's head and see if you can just figure out how to crack the code on making parenting and child raising easier and more enjoyable? Well, that's what we're going to do today in today's episode. And then stay tuned because in Life Hacks, I'm going to give you multiple, very practical ways, very simple ways to connect with your child and have a better relationship with them overall. It's not as complicated as we like to make it. So buckle up for a simple yet very insightful episode. Hi, you're listening to Java with Jen with your host, Jenna Lee Samuel. On this show, I bring the simplicity of hearing God's voice into everyday life in a no-nonsense, authentic, and super practical way. With coffee in hand and real life in our faces, let's do this. Hey friend, I wanted to interrupt real quick to share a very exciting new development with you. So Java with Jen previously was not considered a nonprofit um, and donations made to Java with Jen were not a tax write-off as many people have asked me about. But the answer now is yes, any donations made to the show are a tax write-off because Java with Jen is coming under the umbrella of Free Life Missions, which is my husband and I's missions organization because the show is reaching over 80 nations. So if you have been considering somewhere that you can give and sow where it is not only a tax write-off, which benefits you in tax season, but is also getting the word of God around the world, I would ask you to consider supporting Java with Jen. I am currently praying that the Lord will bring me five new sponsors over the next two months that will be able to give and help support the growth of the show and me doing this full time. And if you come on as a sponsor, I'm going to be sending you a personalized thank you gift um, just to show you my appreciation. And basically, you'll be joining a fun little group of people that are making this show happen, and they're all near and dear to my heart, and it's just a great little community. So if that's you, I would ask for you to go check out patreon.com slash java with Jen. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash java with Jen. The link is also in the show notes, and that's where you can get signed up. Leave me a note when you do that so that I know that you are wanting to be one of my five sponsors that I'm praying for. So uh, thanks for jump. Thanks for listening to this. Let's get back to the show. Hello and welcome back to another episode at Java with Jen. I'm your host, Jenna Lee Samuel, and I am here with a very special young guest who I thought would be fun to bring on the show to speak to parents and grandparents and share uh, some wisdom about parenting and raising young ones from a young perspective. Now, don't disconnect here because I find that when I take the time to really hear what kids say, they actually have a lot of insight, but it's simple, which I love. And to be honest, actually reminds me of how the Lord does things because God has a way of keeping things that we make complicated really simple. So we're going to interview my son, Shiloh Rubin. What do you say, Shiloh? Hi. (laughs) And he is 11. And we worked up a series of questions to get his insights from a kid's perspective of how we as parents might could parent better or be more supportive of our children. And he even asked me, he said, Mom, but you guys were all kids before. And I said, yeah, but sometimes it's easy to forget what it's like to be a kid. Do you remember what it was like to be a baby and have your diapers changed? A little bit, yeah. A little bit? Enough to uh, to feel like you could feel like you're a baby again? No. No, exactly. So that's what it's like for us being kids. So that's why your insights are important and helpful, okay? So why don't you tell my listeners what your name and your age are and maybe a couple of your hobbies. My name is Shiloh. I'm 11. And I like sharks and I like going to our ditch and catching turtles. Mm -hmm. And I like going shooting and archery. Mm Mm-hmm. Playing outdoors is one of your favorite things, huh? Yeah. Yeah. He always will bring home wild creatures that he finds outside. Okay, Shiloh, so let's jump into this. What is it that makes being a kid hard? Well, what is it that makes being a kid hard? Doing a bunch of chores. And for me, it's stressful whenever you have to do one job and then your other parent tells you to do another and then another, and oh. then another. Oh, my goodness. So you have, like, 13 jobs. 
Yeah, that gets that gets to be a lot, doesn't it? And then they complain that you haven't done the job because you're finishing all the other jobs. <laughs> yeah, that's frustrating. I'll get frustrated too, man. I feel ya. Okay, so what makes being a kid fun? Ice cream and pizza. Oh, food. You are a boy, so yes, food makes boys happy. What makes you remember an adult and want to learn from them? Uh, when you spend time with them and stuff. Oh, so like when adults spend time with you, it makes you feel important? Yeah. Okay. So what advice would you give to parents who want to connect with their kids better? Sometimes do what the kids want to do. Is it, what's it like being a kid and feeling like you always got to do what everyone else says? Stressful. Stressful, because you want to do what you enjoy as well. Yeah. How does it make you feel when, like, me or daddy does something you enjoy? Like when I come and play hangman with you in the room or we play army soldiers or I do shooting with you, how does that make you feel? Fun excited and happy yeah like you're important mm -hmm. okay so how do you think parents can best support their children's interests and hobbies because obviously we can't do everything and we've got to work so what can parents do to help support their kids in those things cheer them on and whenever they're kind of going down like or if they're getting beaten you support them because sometimes they kind of rise up and they beat the other person. Oh, you mean like if they're losing in their sport or something, cheering for them makes them get strength to do better? Yeah. Oh, that's good insight. Yeah, you're right. When you guys played basketball, you guys always did really good when we would be there to cheer for you. Do you want to be a parent? Yeah. What kind of, how many kids do you want to have? Two, and I want them to be twins, and I want them to be boy and a girl. A boy and a girl. Wow. So what's your favorite family activity and why do you enjoy it? Uh, my favorite family activity is watching and going to the movies. Mm -hmm. And I enjoy it because we get a lot of snack. I with my family and it's a movie. Oh, that does sound. And we're going to do that tonight, aren't we? Yep. Okay, so what about this? You've heard me talk about a work ethic, right? Having a good work ethic. How do you think that parents can help their kids develop a strong, healthy work ethic? First of all, can you describe what a work ethic is? I don't know what a work ethic is. It's hard to, hard to define, huh? A work ethic is the way that you work, if you're a good worker or a bad worker, right? Mm -hmm. What are the three things that I say make a good worker? Leave something better than you found it. Oh, yeah, that is good. Remember, I always say there's three things when you guys are doing chores. You need to do it complete, completely, good, happily, happily, and with a good attitude. Well, okay, close. <laughs> completely, happily, and excellently, right? Yeah. Yeah, maybe I need to say those things more I'm often. pretty sure excellently and completely mean the same thing in this situation. Sometimes you can do a job completely without doing it with excellence. Excellence is in the details. And so make sure like if you sweep the bathroom, making sure you get all the corners is what excellence is. Okay. That's so, also completely. True story. So how do you think parents can help their kids develop a good work ethic where they, where they work like that? Bribe them. <laughs> <laughs> Bribe them. <laughs> Bribe them for ice cream. Rewards do help, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what motivates you to do a better job? Is it the fact that I'm going to make you come back in and do it 27 times if you do a bad job? Not really, but yeah. Yeah, okay. So it's not as motivating as a reward? Nope. <laughs> okay, good to know. Okay, so what advice would you give to grandparents who want to stay involved in their grandkids' lives? Mm, always live close by. Mm. And... Most call them every day. Call them, okay. If you're far away, call them. Yeah. And try and talk to them as much as you can. Yeah, what about grandparents that live far away? Call them. Call them, yeah, that's true. That's a good advice. What about discipline? I know discipline is something that is hard for parents and kids, but it's important. Do you feel like disciplining your kids is important? Yeah. Why? So they learn what's right and what's wrong. It's true. How would you feel if we never taught you the difference between right and wrong? How would you feel about if you're prepared for life? 
then I could do some bad things and get in big trouble. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you know that we love you because we won't let you do too bad of things to land in jail, huh? I remember Benjamin telling you that when you were little. So what's a way that parents can discipline their kids that will help them want to hear the, the correction or hear it better? I feel like spanking your kids doesn't really work because it just makes them mostly mad at you. Oh, I think maybe I need to spank you more then so we can learn that lesson better, huh? No. <laughs> Why? And Why would you say that? Because I, doesn't it remind you not to do the thing again? Well, not really. No? Well, what helps you learn the lesson? Groundation or ending up in jail. Ending up in jail. I can't put you in jail. The, the fear of being put in jail? Yeah. Well, I think spankings maybe. Um, I don't endorse his advice on this one. The Bible says that if you spare the rod, you spoil the child, and that to fail to discipline your child is to hate your child because that means... I'm not saying don't discipline. I'm saying just don't spank them because it gets them mad because you're technically just hitting them. Not true. Okay, so... It's legal abuse. No, it is not. <laughs> so spankings, do you know there's a proverb that says <clears throat> that the pain of discipline drives foolishness far from us. And so there is actually some... And the Bible also says that he who has suffered in his body is done with sin. And so there's something about the physical pain of a spanking that actually trains our brains <coughs> to find a new way to do things, right? And so now spankings can be done well or spankings can be done poorly. Would you agree? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So spankings done well are spankings that are done controlled, like in a very controlled way, not emotional, not angry, not out of um, frustration, but anger or but spankings that are done intentionally to drive out foolishness is important. And I, I distinguish that for my kids. I tell them, Shiloh, you'll you'll understand when you're an adult, you'll be grateful for the spankings you got. I'm grateful for the spankings. <laughs> okay. Well, how would you say that you have begun to learn God's voice? Because I hear from him all the time. Okay, but does every kid experience that? Nope. But they can, right? Yep. Okay, so what made the difference? How did you start learning to hear God's voice? With my fourth grade teacher, Miss Bean. Mm -hmm. And she taught everyone in the whole class. I'm not sure if everyone in the whole class heard from God, but she told us whatever we heard from God, we draw it. And I still have it in a binder. You do? Yeah. That's very cool. I love that because we teach you guys at home mm -hmm. how to hear God's voice too. You and I have sat in my quiet times before exercising how to hear God's voice. And so I just loved that you had a teacher that was helping you to learn that as well. And your Sunday school teacher, Pastor Sam, he helps with that as well, doesn't he? Yep. Yeah, he helps you guys exercise it. So give me an example of a time when you heard God's voice. So I told my children's pastor, Pastor Sam, uh, that I was a prophet and he didn't believe me. So I said, I'll prove it. Wait, wait, pause. What made you decide to tell him you're a prophet? That's kind of a big, a big claim. Because you're a prophet and dad's a prophet. You think so? Okay, keep going. Okay. So I told him that and he didn't believe me. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'll prove it. And I said, God told me what Asher was wearing on his clothes. Asher was his son, right? Yes. Okay. And, and you hadn't seen Asher yet that morning? Nope. Okay. What did God tell you? <laughs> he told me what he was wearing. But what, what did he describe? Um, he was wearing blue jeans and with a jacket that's camo and green with a white collar. Mm -hmm. And that's what I said. When he went in... He saw Asher wearing blue jeans with a jacket that had camo green and with a white collar. Yeah, Sam told me that and he was pretty stunned. He was like, what the heck? But I think part of what makes it easy for you to hear God's voice is you expect him to talk to you, don't you? You know he can and you know you can hear his voice, right? And you know it's simple, right? So what would you, how would you encourage parents, maybe who are Christians, and they want to teach their kid how to hear God's voice, how would you encourage parents to teach their kids to do that? 
Mm, turn on worship music or keep it really quiet. Mm -hmm. Sit still and ask God, speak to me. And then if he does, he might show you a picture, a vision, or talk to you through your heart. Mm -hmm. and, and then you could hear from God. But make sure it lines up with God's word because it could be the devil. Mm, could be the devil. How do you know if it's God speaking or the devil speaking? Because the devil usually speaks kind of harsh and God speaks soft mm. through the heart. That's true. And when the devil speaks, how does it make us feel? Scared. Scared or maybe shameful. Yeah. Right? But when God speaks, how does it make us feel? Makes us feel like we're safe. Mm, that's true. So is, would you say it's important for people to develop their ability to hear God's voice? Yes. How have you seen that make a difference in your life? When did you hear God's voice about something and it was important? I can't remember. I've heard, I've heard his voice so many times. It's true you have. And maybe I think you're still developing that muscle. And I think as you get older and older, it'll get more and more important too. Okay, so what is the wisest thing that mom has taught you and that dad has taught you? Mom, be thankful and don't complain. And dad, <laughs> one of them is be careful with guns because that can end up bad. Yeah. Honestly, I've taught me so much, I don't know. It's hard to think of one thing. Yeah. Okay, so how about this? How do you think parents can talk to their kids about tough topics like bullying or mental health? Um, it depends if the kid's getting bullied or the kid is a bully. Well, how, maybe not even just bullying, but like when it's a difficult topic like that and it's something that is really delicate and sensitive, how can parents talk to their kids so that their kids will want to share and want to open up? Speak soft and gently. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you care like even more than just caring. Mm. And then figure out a solution that won't get them in danger. Yeah, I think that's good advice. How do you think that parents and grandparents can work together to create a family atmosphere of kindness and respect? You spend time with your siblings, and if they need you to do something, you do it. Mm -hmm. And so Teaching each other to serve each other? Yes. Yes. Anything that's nice, really. Like listening to each other kindly and respecting each other's voices. Yes. By maybe instead of arguing when someone says something, just listening respectfully. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. So what would be a last piece of advice that you could give to grandparents or parents to help them enjoy raising their kids even more? Spend time with them and try not to be always on a device working. But you're right. It is important to put the devices down, put the screens down, and give full attention, huh? Because mm -hmm. it makes you feel important, huh? And if your kids want to be on screens, you always being on a screen can make them think they can always be on a screen. That is true. So maybe a good way to do that would be... To say at a certain time in the day, we turn off all the screens and we spend time together. Yeah. Yeah. And family, yeah. family dinner time is a good time to do that, isn't it? Yeah. So you think spending time with your parents makes you feel loved and builds that connection that the kids are looking for? Yeah. I agree with you. Okay, well, Shiloh, I want to thank you for coming on Java with Jen and sharing your wisdom. Now, if you guys missed... I have had Shiloh on the show before. He was my very, very first episode back when he was five years old. It was a very short little recording where we were testing out podcasting. And so if you want to scroll back to episode number one, it's called Testing, Testing, One, Two, Three. And that is my recording with Shiloh. Do you remember doing that? I don't remember it, but I remember you showing. That yeah. was six years ago. It was six years ago. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I've been doing this for a minute, haven't I? All right, well, what would you tell, what would you encourage parents and grandparents about the impact they have on their kids? Think that their kids don't want to hear what they have to say or that their kids don't care about them. What would you encourage them with? Spend time with their parents and grandparents. They'll listen closely, do things that they like to do. Mm. 
or try and find something y'all both like to do. Yeah. Like, for instance, me and Dad both like to go shooting and hunting. Mm -hmm. So your advice to parents and grandparents is, and it's simple advice, but it's, that makes it more doable, is spend time with your kids off of screens, connecting with them, doing what they like, right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes you can connect on screens. Like, we played Minecraft one time That's together. True. We did play Minecraft together, and that was fun. And that was me doing what the kids like to do, even though I don't enjoy Minecraft. And I destroyed my world as quickly as I built it because I didn't know how to use the buttons. But <laughs> the boys had fun laughing at me, and it was me doing something that they enjoy and it was fun, right? We did not laugh at you. Y you guys were definitely getting a kick out of my mis my malfunctioning. <laughs> okay. It's normal for starters. It is normal for starters. Okay, well, thank you, Shiloh, for bringing your wisdom on my show. And thank you for listening to this special episode with Shiloh. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's great. I've, I heard a psychologist say one time that if you have a kid who's acting up, Stop and just ask them what's wrong and what do they need? What do they want? She said our kids, even in their complaining, are telling us what they want if we would just actually listen, um, that they are actually communicating what their needs are. I like them. You like them. <laughs> and so I think we all would do better to actually just listen to exactly what's being said because we naturally as people will say, what we need but when it seems like they're dancing around the bush don't be afraid to ask questions don't be afraid to ask them how they feel but when you're asking respond in a way that makes them feel like it's safe to be honest and safe to kind of messy and figure it out because of us have everything figured out right uh -huh. yeah all right now don't go anywhere because we have four very practical life hacks on how to build connection with your kids <laughs> All right, so welcome to Life Hacks, where I'm going to share with you some really practical, simple ways to connect with your kids. Okay, first of all, one issue we have run into when wanting to connect with our kids in having family nights or whatever is trying to decide what to do that's going to make everybody happy because all the kids have different taste buds, so they all want to go to different restaurants if we go out to eat or if we're making a meal here, they all want to eat something different. If we're choosing some kind of entertainment, they can never agree on a movie. So if you find yourself in that situation, here's what we've decided to do. We have four kids. And so what we'll do is we will, from time to time, we don't always do this well, but when we do do it, it's very effective. We will alternate maybe whoever's birthday is the closest, they get to decide. Or let's say um, we're doing this on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We pick one of those days. Each of the kids has a day of the week assigned to them. So let's say we're doing something on a Monday. If that would be Judah. He's my firstborn. That would be his day. And so that's the day he gets to check the mail. He gets to have the remote. He gets to make the decisions if we have a tie and can't agree on anything. And so they each have their assigned day of the week. Now, if it's a, a Friday, a Saturday weekend, um, what we'll try to do and honestly, if we were better about routine family nights, this would be more effective. Um, but we'll alternate. We'll be like, okay, today we're close to Levi's birthday. And so Levi, you get to be the one to decide what is for dinner or where we're, what we're doing for family night tonight. I remember doing that as a kid. And when it was our turn to make the decision for family night, oh my gosh, it was the best thing ever. And I think I loved it because it made you feel powerful in your family. It made you feel like your voice mattered in your family. And so I feel like giving the kids designated opportunities to make the decisions that affect the whole family actually does more for them than just keep the peace. It actually really does make them feel like they're heard and seen and that their opinion matters in the home. So that's one way that you can do it. If you have multiple kids and making decisions is tough, designate days, give them, put them on a rotation. Um, secondly, another simple way to connect with your kids is, and this is a principle we pulled from our discipleship that we do at church, is that the way to foster connection with anybody is to do what they enjoy doing. And Shiloh actually mentioned this in the episode. But the reason why is because you're meeting them where they are. Jesus didn't call us 
to heaven to reconcile the relationship. He came to earth. He became a human. He experienced our very experience. And this is what causes us to be able to trust him and know like, hey, he's been there. I can follow in his footsteps. And so when you get down into your kid's world and you get involved in what they love, it does the same thing. So what I'll try to do in very simple ways is I know my oldest son loves playing guitar. So if I want to have a little connection with him, I will either take him to Guitar Center and let him have some fun and I'll just go with him and we'll just kind of wander around and I'll just watch him and spend time with him and encourage him. Or I'll go sit in his room when he's playing guitar and I'll ask him questions about what's the new technique you're learning? What song is that? Ooh, can you play me something? And I'll just give my attention to what he loves. With Benjamin, he loves basketball. And so I will go out and sit and watch him play basketball and cheer for him and be like, oh, you almost made it. You know, just making him feel seen in the world that he loves. So my my other son, Shiloh, he loves playing outdoors and he loves shooting guns, as you guys heard in the episode. And so I'll go out there and I'll shoot airsoft guns with him or I'll shoot, shoot guns or I'll um, shoot darts or whatever. I try to do what he enjoys. And that makes our kids feel seen heard and valued and that is a very simple way to do it a lot of parents i find we try to get the kids to take interest in what we're interested in but it, they're kids they're not at that maturity level we are the ones who should be able to get outside of our comfort zone and get interested in what they're interested in and when you do that you will reap what you sow if you are sowing constantly interest in them you will eventually reap them being interested in what you have to say Okay, another thing that helps to nurture connection is listening without judgment. So I this, is, this takes discipline and I have to remind myself. So like there was one time I had a conversation with one of my sons who was having a bad attitude and I said, hey, we need to figure out what's underneath this. Like what's wrong? And so I sent him in his room to go process. I wrote out some questions on paper to kind of help him process his thoughts like what am I feeling when did I start feeling this way? Um, is there a lie I'm believing that's making me feel this way or whatever? And I, I put those little prompts on paper and I told him, go and just go process and then come talk to me. Well, when he came to talk to me and he was processing, some of what he, he was saying actually was kind of hurtful and the delivery was really rude and disrespectful. And I had to fight back everything in me. I wanted to lash out at him and be like, you don't get to treat me that way. But then I realized generally you asked him to process. So he's processing and it might be a little messy. We can clean it up later. So I just held my tongue and I, I maintained a respectful tone and I listened through and I kindly and calmly said, hey, you know, the way you're saying that is really disrespectful. Can you please share your thoughts in a way that's not so disrespectful? And so I stayed really calm, but the goal was to listen to him without a lot of judgment. I wanted to make space. That's the term that in the psychology world, they say to hold space for someone means we just let them process and we expect it to be messy and we don't get hung up on the mess. We just listen for their heart and, and give them room to get it all out, process it all, and then land in a healthier place. And that's what happened in that conversation. It was messy at first, but I was able to continue to ask questions to help him drill down to the root issue. And we finally got down to the root issue. So listening without judgment is very, very important. Your children are looking for understanding. They are craving understanding. They want to feel seen, heard, and like they matter. So when your kid is talking... Make a mental note if you need to bring correction about something they're saying. If it's not essential to say it in that moment, save it. You can always come back to it later. But in the moment when they're talking and opening up, honor that vulnerability by just holding space for them. If something needs to be corrected, come back to it later if you're able to at all. Because that is just going to make them feel safer in the moment. So hold space for your kids Listen without judgment is another way. Okay, last practical way that helps with connection, and this is something we're still working on. We're not great at it, um, but it is a goal. And that is the 777, um, I don't want to call it a rule, but the 777 habit, which is every seven days you spend a day with the family, like 
every week you have a family night or every week you have a day that you guys do something as a family to just build connection. And then every seven weeks, you spend a weekend away or you spend a weekend like maybe an overnight trip, go camping with the kids, um, take a day and go to Houston, you know, something like that. Do something that's a little bit lengthier every seven weeks. That's like every two months. And then every seven months, go on a vacation. Now, I know not everybody can do that, but that comes out to one to two times a year you go on a vacation. Now, we've always lived on a budget. Going on big vacations is not something we've been able to do much. We're ministers and, you know, people don't pick that lifestyle for <laughs> for the paycheck. Um, and so we've had, but I grew up a missionary kid and, and we had prob- lived on probably even less. And yet my parents were really good at finding a way to make vacations happen on a budget. And so whatever your budget is, there are ways to find interesting and fun things to do on a budget. And so that's what I've had to do. It takes some creativity, takes some resourcefulness, um, takes some saving, but you can have vacations with your family. And maybe that means you ask if you can borrow um, a camper trailer and take the kids, or maybe that means you just go camping and you just bring some food along, pitch some tents and you go camping. Maybe you have to borrow camping gear in order to do that, but finding ways to make memories with your family is really important. And when you're considering that, consider this. Whenever you experience something new with somebody, whether that's your kids, your spouse, a friend, coworkers, whatever, whenever you experience something new, there is a chemical in your brain that is released that is the same chemical you experience when you're falling in love with someone. So by having shared experiences that are new, that's why it fosters connection because it releases the same chemical of being in love. So if you want your kids to be in love with you, if you want to be in love with your kids, have new shared experiences. Now, you may have traditions with them and those are good and important because tradition also makes you feel like you're a part of a community. But doing things that are new, so you want to really have a good mixed bag, doing new things and doing traditional things. Doing new things will foster that excitement of living life, experiencing life together, and enjoying and loving these relationships that you're in. So those are your life hacks. Again, the 777 plan, every seven days, um, do something as a family, every seven weeks, try to get away for the night or do like a weekend trip and every seven months try to do some kind of big vacation and or big is a relative term but something in your budget but do something more significant a few days away Um, and that could even be a staycation something you just do locked up in the house where you just stay local and do things easy and just do fun activities whatever it is do it within your budget but the 777 plan is just a fun little guideline to help again if you have multiple kids and you have to make decisions, give your kids delegated days and times where they can make the decisions for the family. The food you eat, the activity you do, maybe you give them options to choose from. Um, That makes them feel powerful in their family and like their voice matters. And then trying to catch your kids in things that they enjoy and participating, observing, and supporting what they're doing. Don't come in and change it. Don't try to drag them into what you love. Go seek them out doing the things they love and show interest. And then listening without judgment. Hold space for them when they're sharing their feelings, especially when they're raw emotions. Hold space for them. Make them feel understood, not judged. That is huge in making them feel safe in the relationship. So there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, Stay tuned for more Java with Jen. We are not taking a break this summer. Every year in the past, I have made the the season break in the summer. But I'm actually going to keep going through the summer. So you will have some episodes to listen to as you are bored with your kids at home (laughs) on summer break. So if you guys have any feedback for me, any topic suggestions or uh, questions or things you'd like me to dig into in an episode or even maybe you have an interview suggestion like you have an author that you'd like me to see if I can schedule an interview with send those to me you can either um, leave me a voice message in the Spotify app which is cool I've never had anyone do that yet so if you do that you'd be my first and it would be super cool Um, so leave me a voice message in the Spotify app 
or you can come follow me at Java with Jen on Instagram and send me a message over there. Uh, so either way, reach out to me, let me know your thoughts. Also, don't forget if you wanted to support the show, we are now officially under nonprofit status and your donations are a tax deduction. They will go through Free Life. And so feel free to head over to patreon.com slash Java with Jen. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Java with Jen. You can make your donations there. It's a great way to, um, you know, get some tax shelters throughout the year if you need more contributions to bring your taxes down. And it helps keep this show going and ensuring that I can do this full time. So thank you for those who do that already. You are such a blessing. And you can head over to Java with Jen merch if you wanna get you some cool Java with Jen swag. There are cups and t-shirts. Oh, you don't think I should say swag? Nope, nope. No. Oh, uh -oh I'm getting cringe oh, over here. It's old. It's old. <laughs> Anyways, and you can get Java with Jen coffee over there as well. So thanks for listening to today's show. You guys have a wonderful week. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for tuning in to today's show. Listen, let's stay connected. Come follow me on Instagram at Java with Jen, where you can follow the latest and say, hey, it's a really great way to stay in touch. Many of you have also asked how you can support the show. You can make donations through the Anchor app or on Patreon, or of course, by sharing, rating, and reviewing on social media and iTunes as well. Your heartfelt feedback always reminds me why I do this. Also, don't miss our merch store where you can get super cool Java with Jen swag and coffee. Find it at javawithjenmerch.com. Until next time, remember, hearing God's voice is simple and he wants to be a part of your everyday life. See you next week.